Alright, hello guys, how's it going? In today's video, we're going to be taking a look at two major storms, one of which is ongoing, the other is going to be getting started in just a couple of days. Anyways, for today's comment of the day, I want to know, by the time we reach Thursday, what do you think that we will have as far as a risk of severe weather? Will we stay in enhanced risk? Will we upgrade to a moderate or a high risk? Let me know in the comments down below, and I'll be picking one of those for tomorrow's video. Now let's get straight into things, and first things first, we're taking a look at the national radar right now, and when I called this storm a monster storm, I was not joking, look at the structure there, you can totally see the counterclockwise motion of that entire storm system, especially over Kansas and Oklahoma there, uh, and that precipitation just extends northward into Nebraska, South Dakota, uh, Minnesota, Wisconsin, which is a massive hike by the way, might I add, and then you can see a lot of that extends down through into Missouri, Arkansas, Louisiana, and Texas, where it eventually becomes thunderstorms down there as well. So this storm has a little bit of everything, but a very, very massive storm ongoing as we speak. So I'm going to zoom into two areas, but first off, we're going to zoom down there to Kansas uh, and surrounding regions to take a look at the center of that low pressure center real quick. Now look at this storm. This is absolutely a monster over Wichita. Uh, I I'm sure you can just feel the pressure for people to get sinus headaches from that type of thing. This is absolutely crazy uh, to have this strong of a storm just like right overhead. Uh, obviously, living on the East Coast, I've dealt with that before with tropical storms. It is absolutely a mess. Uh, we have a lot of those yellows and darker greens going on, even some oranges picking, being picked up south of Hayes in Kansas there, uh, and then west of Wichita. Uh, that's especially where we're dealing with some heavy, heavy rainfall. Also, an area there in southern Nebraska, south of Grand Island there, south of Omaha, uh, we're also dealing with a corridor of heavier rain that is going to move over I-80, obviously, as, you know, the the coming hours progress, probably by the time this video is even getting uploaded, that will be over I-80 and some of those towns along there. Also, Missouri, we have some higher precipitation rates as well for the central regions that are in the yellows. Now, what we're going to do is we're just going to move on and we're going to zoom into the south central United States and some of the Gulf states where we're having some thunderstorms currently. Now, as you can see, we do have a lot of thunderstorm activity down here for Texas and Louisiana. Houston, you're getting hit with a line of those as we speak. 6.37 a.m. Uh, Eastern time. So I think you guys are central time over there. So even earlier, uh, very wild this early in the morning to be dealing with a line of thunderstorms. There was a severe thunderstorm warning uh, briefly north of Victoria in Texas, but that ended uh, quite a few hours ago. It doesn't look like we have any more of those. We do have a flood, flash flood warning there for Louisiana. So we're watching that very closely as well. Um, we do just have generally some heavier thunderstorms ongoing throughout the states of Louisiana and Texas. We're going to talk about the severe weather threat in just a moment for day one, two, and three. Uh, so we'll kind of cover a lot of that as well in just a moment. So what we're going to do is we're going to move on. We're going to get rid of the radar and we're going to move on right into the model guidance in just a moment. So as you can see, this is actually the day one categorical risk. And you might be wondering, why isn't there a little bit of that over Texas? That's actually kind of like before day one, because this starts at 12Z. It's not even 12Z yet from the time I'm making this video. So this is going to be for probably from about 8 a.m. and onward. So right now it's 640 at the time I'm recording this audio. Uh, so that's why there's a little bit of uh, a difference from what we just took a look at on the radar and then this. So that should help clarify that. We also have a marginal risk up there for Missouri and Illinois, as well as Iowa. Uh, and both of these areas actually do have a 2% chance of tornadoes as well. So we'll be watching for that. But I don't think that we will be taking a look at any sort of crazy tornado event where we're going to have multiple tornadoes obviously always be aware always always be checking for those warnings watches and advisories also always having a NOAA radio handy which is always great I have a ton of survival uh, links down below for like NOAA radios other rain gauges just all sorts of weather and survival stuff in emergency situations links for those are all down below you can check all of those things out I posted basically only useful things down there uh, so I highly recommend you check that out. Here's day two, though, because I don't really want to touch too much on day one. That risk is quite uh, small. But by the time we're reaching day two, we do have a slight risk of severe weather. We have a large marginal risk there from Texas, Oklahoma, Arkansas, Louisiana, and then through Mississippi. This is as that second storm is going to be developing. And then we have a slight risk there for Arkansas, Louisiana, and Mississippi. I would not be surprised to see this extend westward well into Oklahoma and Texas. Uh, by the time we're reaching Wednesday, tomorrow, from the time I'm making this video. Uh, yeah, I would not be surprised at all to see this actually get extended. Considering how severe the weather is expected to be on Thursday, this is just one day before. It's very common before a tornado outbreak to see some activity the day before. Uh, we saw that with our last event, and I wouldn't be surprised if we see something here on Wednesday as well within this slight risk region. 
taking a look at those individual outlooks first off the hail outlook we have a five percent chance within 25 miles of a given location there within the green and then a 15 percent chance there within the yellow and then for our tornado risk we have a two percent chance there within that entire green region but i would not be surprised to see this upgraded to a five percent uh, for this date just because again it is the day before a potential tornado outbreak i think that could lead to the conditions being really really good now what we're going to do is we're going to move on and we're going to move on with that modeled guidance take a look at storm number one and then storm number two and then we're going to take a look at day three severe weather event which i think could be a tornado outbreak Now here we are taking a look at storm number one you can see a 997 millibar low pressure center that is going to move from kansas and through northern missouri and southern iowa there again as a 997 millibar low pressure center possibly some snowfall there for nebraska and south dakota according to this model and then by the time we're reaching about this is about 1 p.m there on wednesday maybe 2 p.m and we have a 998 millibar low pressure center there over wisconsin some snowfall for minnesota but generally the the number one thing i want to be taking a look at here is that storminess down there for louisiana mississippi alabama because that is our day two severe weather activity that we just saw there on that categorical risk there storm number two there is moving in through new mexico and texas there with that heavy snowfall for those four corner states also the panhandle of texas which many people were happy to inform me about their weather yesterday that was really really awesome learning so much about the weather there on the panhandle of texas apparently it is very very extreme the weather there Here's our convective available potential energy for 2 p.m. on Wednesday here. And as you can see, we're well above 2,000 here on the Cape uh, in those yellows and oranges. That is going to be highly sufficient for severe weather activity. The temperatures are going to be in the lower to mid-70s throughout all of these severe weather regions. Um, and then here's that simulated radar by the time we're taking a look. And look, I think most of the severe weather that's going to occur on Wednesday is going to be Wednesday night late heading into Thursday very early morning because this is at about 12 a.m. on Thursday. And as you can see, those thunderstorms are just developing there mostly for Mississippi and Alabama, as well as the panhandle of Florida there. And then by the time we're taking a look at approximately 6 a.m. there on Thursday morning, those move up mostly into the northern regions of Mississippi, Alabama, and then portions of Arkansas. This is really going to dictate how severe that weather will be on Thursday, because if these move out very quickly, we're going to see those temperatures and the sunshine move in Thursday morning and allow for much more severe weather later on thursday if these showers and thunderstorms stick around and really eat up some of that cape and don't allow the sunshine to come through that's going to really uh that's really going to hinder how much that severe weather can develop on thursday that's what we saw with our high risk day by the way we saw those thunderstorms the same fashion these ones did and they did eventually move out and that's why we got the high risk so what we're going to do here is we're going to move on and we're going to take a look at the day three thursday severe weather categorical outlook here in just a moment and then we're going to move on with the model guidance for day three now here we are taking a look at day three and as you can see we have a large enhanced risk at this point let's just break it down category by category we have a general thunderstorm risk there in the lighter green that's where you don't really expect severe weather but it is slightly possible uh, within that marginal risk which is the darker green region that's where we have a good chance at some isolated severe weather occurring within that region especially when it's that big you know you're going to see some of those reports in some places within there there's going to be just a little bit more potent thunderstorms the yellow is where we start to get a little bit more widespread with severe weather we expect uh, scattered severe weather uh, storminess throughout that entire region uh, and the chance of you seeing a thunderstorm if you're in that yellow region is is quite high now that enhanced risk is where we see the widespread severe weather beginning that's where likely all of these regions are going to have a very large chance at seeing severe weather of some sort wind hail or tornadoes and that's for louisiana eastern arkansas there uh, the northern like seven eighths of mississippi there uh, most of northwestern alabama and then portions of western tennessee as well all within there i would not be surprised to see this grow and i wouldn't be surprised and this is pretty bold but i wouldn't be surprised if on thursday we do have a moderate risk at this point uh, based on what i'm about to show you so let's move on with that modeled guidance so here's the simulated radar this is by about 12 p.m you can see none of those storms have really developed we have some showers in the area again that is going to impact how large that risk will be uh, depending on if those move out or not the high temperatures here this is where i'm starting to get concerned we have lower 70s mid 70s here throughout the entire severe weather region which is very high we have those dew points in the 70s which again is also very high and then that convective available potential energy cape we have the reds showing up which means we're above 3,000 in some spots which is just what we had on that high risk day as well 
not saying this will be a high risk. I'm just saying there is some similarities here. Now, our wind shear, we do have those browns and pinks showing up, which is going to be in the higher end of things there. And that does help wind damage, first off, occur. This is going to create some windier storms and also uh, those tornadoes develop. Now, this is where I start to get really concerned. This is the SIG tornado parameter or significant tornado parameter. Uh, and this is just absolutely maxed out. We have, uh, and they're in the pinks, basically. If you're in the reds, you're at that moderate end, yellows to reds and oranges. That's where you're on the mo moderate end of the significant tornado parameter. But the pinks and purples, that's where we're on the very high end of this. And you can see those bright pinks showing up there for Mississippi and Alabama. That's where we're above the maximum of 10. Uh, this model says here that the maximum is 12.16. So we're like through the roof on the significant tornado parameter at this point. So yes, I am very concerned about this. And then as we take a look at that simulated radar, we have discrete supercells everywhere uh, by this point at about 2 p.m. there on Thursday. So this is looking to be an afternoon threat. And me and Brendan will likely be trying to go live throughout the day on Thursday here, March 25th. All right. Now, the Storm Prediction Center has specified that there will be discrete supercells likely throughout the entire area. And you're probably wondering, what does a discrete supercell even mean? So here's a photo real quick of a discrete supercell. This comes from Radar Scope, an awesome app that you can download today. Uh, it, I think it's 10 bucks on iPhone. It, it is pretty pricey, but you are getting some high-end stuff if you do download that. They're not a sponsor at all. Uh, I'm just, I'm just letting you guys know that I like this app. So this is a discrete supercell. You can see it's all alone up there. And these are usually the ones that create the the more tornadoes. We see more tornadoes from these than the embedded supercells, which is the alternative. Um, and, and this one probably did produce a tornado. And th this is where we see a lot of our larger tornadoes as well in these discrete supercells. Here's an embedded supercell and they are very bad as well, but it's the, it's the discrete supercells that you're watching for the worst of the worst. These embedded supercells can be very bad as well. And this is an example. You can see there is a supercell there at the top, but it is completely embedded in a line of thunderstorms there. Um, and, and these can also create very large and damaging tornadoes, uh, but not as often as those discrete supercells. So that is the difference if you ever hear me referring to a discrete or a embedded supercell there. My confidence tab, I'm at a four out of six. We're obviously taking a look at day three on the severe weather outlook, which is a little bit longer into it. Uh, and obviously there's a lot that could happen. We could be pretty much staying at a lower end enhanced risk, or we could move up into a moderate or a high risk. There's a lot of uncertainty. And over the coming two days, we're going to learn a lot about what we expect to happen here. So we're at a four out of six at this point. Anyway, for today's comment of the day, I asked you guys out of the two major storms that are upcoming, which one do you think will be the most major? And James Marr said, I believe the second one will be the most major one out of the two. And I definitely agree there. It seems like it will be the stronger storm. Anyway, for today's patron highlight of the day, I want to thank you all for supporting the channel, but especially our platinum patrons, Property Damage, John Ben Benick, James Wade, Dovey Nagel, Alan Balamo, Adam S., Larry LePan, Donna Carnes, Cameron Marshall, and Aiden Mattis, alongside our diamond patrons, Bill Roberts, Alan Cherry, Marcus Connolly, Noah Harley, Michael Cotalessa, Michael Buell, Cap Bite, Charles Stinnett, Kellen Manhart, It's Jay, Cindy Klein, Mark J., Luke Falego, Garys, and John Qualisi. If you would like to be a part of this patron end screen of the day, you can do so by joining our very exciting Patreon page in the description and in the pinned comments down below. Anyway, guys, thank you so much for watching this video. Again, be sure to share with your friends, family, and social media, and destroy that like button. I'll see you guys in the next video.